In this video, we'll look at the Heathkit IM2260 digital multimeter. A large portion of Heathkit's business was selling test equipment in kit form. The first products offered in the 1940s were an oscilloscope and a vacuum tube voltmeter. As technology advanced, Heathkit introduced new models. By the early 1980s, state-of-the-art multimeters were solid state and featured digital displays. The IM2260 digital multimeter was one of three new DMMs released by Heathkit in 1982. Selling for US $129.95 when introduced, it was the lowest price model of the three. It features a 3.5 digit red LED display. It can measure AC and DC voltage and current as well as resistance and can run on batteries or on AC power using an optional power adapter. It was offered as a kit and was sold from 1982 to 1991. This 1984 Heathkit catalog shows the IM2260 selling for US $119.95. The more expensive IM2264, which featured an LCD display, true RMS measurements, and an analog meter, was selling for $249.95. Also offered was the handheld IM2215 as well as the SM77 which was factory assembled for Heathkit by Fluke and branded Heath by Fluke. Note that I own an IM2215 and I've made a YouTube video about it. In the same catalog they were still selling the IM5228 vacuum tube voltmeter which was little changed from the first design in 1947. The IM2260 is a three and a half digit digital multimeter. It can measure AC or DC voltage and current as well as resistance. It was only offered as a kit and could be assembled and calibrated without any additional test equipment. Voltage ranges are 2, 20, 200 and 100 volts. Current ranges are 2 milliamps, 20 milliamps, 200 milliamps, 2 amps and 10 amps and resistance ranges are 2K, 20K, 200K, 2000K, and 20 megohms. It also features a diode test resistance range that shows the forward voltage drop. Basic accuracy is plus or minus 0.5% for DC voltage and 1% for AC volts. It's input protected to 1000 volts DC and 750 volts AC. The current ranges are fused except for the 10 amp range. The resistance mode is protected to voltages up to plus or minus 350 volts. The unit is floating with respect to ground and rated safe to be referenced up to 500 volts DC from ground. It features a 3.5 digit 0.43 inch red 7 segment LED display. The design is built around a 40 pin MOS LSI digital multimeter IC that implements the majority of the functions. While some sources say it's a custom chip, it appears to be a Maxim ICL7107 CPL monolithic analog to digital converter, which may still be attainable as new old stock if you have a unit where it's bad. The unit can be powered from the AC line or batteries, which could be carbon zinc or alkaline cells or nickel cadmium rechargeables. It accepts six C cells. Battery life was rated 6 hours for carbon zinc, 20 hours for alkaline, and 10 hours for NICAD. AC power required an optional power adapter. Different models were offered for 120 volts AC and 240 volts AC. When using NICAD batteries, you could charge them using the adapter. Heathkit also sold optional RF and high voltage probes. Operation is pretty straightforward. You turn the unit on, select the function, and then the range. All ranges use the COM and IN jacks, except for the 10 amp current range, which uses a separate jack. Most modern meters use a different dedicated jack for current to avoid connecting a low impedance input if you meant to measure voltage but inadvertently selected a current range. This unit doesn't have that safety feature. After power up, a warm up time of 20 minutes is recommended for maximum accuracy, but it's okay to use for basic measurements immediately. Functions are DC volts, AC volts, DC amps, AC amps, and ohms. There are four voltage ranges and five current and five resistance ranges. Here's a basic DC voltage measurement using a small DC power supply. While the input is protected, it's good practice to start on the highest range if the input voltage is unknown and then switch to the lowest range possible for the measured voltage.
over range is shown as a leading one. The last range for DC volts is a battery voltage test. A reading of over 6 volts indicates that the batteries, if present, are adequate. Here's an AC voltage measurement of the AC power line. And now a resistance measurement using a resistance substitution box. Pressing ohms and DC and the 2K range activates the diode test function which tests a diode forward voltage drop, typically about 0.6 volts for silicon diodes. They suggested also testing a diode reverse resistance using the highest 20 mega ohm range which should read as open. Bipolar transistors can also be checked like two back-to-back -back diodes. The diode test is summarized on the rear panel of the meter. The plastic case was the same as used on some other Heathkit instruments such as frequency counters. It features a rotatable handle that also functions as a stand and can be locked in position. It's not particularly convenient to open the case as once the two halves are attached they stay together. You need to remove some screws and brackets and then carefully slide the unit out. Circuitry is on three printed circuit boards with some point-to-point -point wiring. There are main A to D and display circuit boards. Some of the wiring was wire wrapped and a tool was included with the kit. The kit also included a small IC removal tool. The main PCB is the largest and has the front end circuitry and switches. There's a set of relatively complicated push buttons for function and range switching. It has several trim pots for calibration and a fuse. The main PCB also has shielding on the bottom. The circuit boards are single sided and as usually the case there are some jumpers needed on the board for additional interconnections. The A to D board has the 40 pin LSI DMM chip and related parts. The display board on the front has the seven segment LEDs and is soldered at a 90 degree angle to the A to D board. At the back is the battery holder. Note the calibration sticker which is used for calibration and will be discussed later. I bought this unit on eBay from a seller near me in Ottawa, Canada in February of 2020. It came with the full set of original manuals and even the original box. It was said to be fully working. I don't know any history of the unit. The box has a sticker which is bilingual English and French, which would indicate that it was likely sold by Heathkit Canada, possibly in Ottawa or Montreal. It came with an AC adapter, which was optional when the units were new. I suspect this is not an original Heathkit adapter, as there's no Heathkit branding on it. The test leads were missing. It uses simple banana jacks to a test probe and alligator clip for the ground. I had these on hand that worked. The manual is dated 1981 and is the usual extensive Heathkit manual, 150 pages long covering assembly, test, operation, and circuit description. Also included was a large schematic and fold-out pictorials to aid in assembly and calibration. After some visual inspection, the unit was powered up and all functions checked out. The unit's very clean inside and out, particularly considering it's at least 30 years old. I went through the calibration procedure. As a kit, calibration posed a problem as the typical builder did not have access to other test equipment or calibration references. It's a testament to Heathkit that they were able to provide a way to calibrate the instrument to its rated accuracy without any instruments. Calibration initially sets the trimmers for a course adjustment centered or at one end of rotation. You can calibrate using references built into the instrument. 
A label provided with each unit listed values unique to the calibration resistors in the unit to use when adjusting to the built-in references. This allowed the built-in calibration to be quite accurate without the use of high precision resistors or other components. AC calibration used a small external test circuit containing two resistors and diode. Alternatively, you can calibrate using laboratory voltage and resistance standards if available. I used a third method which was to use power supplies and resistance boxes, measuring them with an accurate DMM and then adjusting the IM2260 for the same reading. You adjust a number of trimmers for the correct reading for DC volts, AC volts, and ohms ranges. The current ranges are not separately calibrated. I ran through the calibration procedure using voltage and resistance sources and this x -tech meter as a reference. The calibration was quite close and I just made some small adjustments. The only modification that had been made to this unit was to hardwire an external power adapter, which as mentioned doesn't appear to be original, and to disconnect the internal battery pack. I don't know why this was done. Maybe the owner didn't care about using battery power. Note that the nickel cadmium rechargeable batteries are rarely used anymore. Most modern batteries like lithium ion could be used, but would require a smart charger and not the charger circuit built into the unit. While it lacks some of the bells and whistles of modern DMMs, this is a nice basic digital meter which is adequate for electronics bench use even today, particularly if it's calibrated. On the market for 10 years, this was the last Heathkit designed digital multimeter kit that the company sold, up to the point where they exited the kit business in 1991.